we have several uh, violists and violinists and electronic artists. So first up is, sorry, let me check my, Devin, Devin Arrington on violin. Hey, Devin. Hi. Hey, why don't you tell us a little bit about the piece that you're gonna be doing? Sure. Yeah, so this is a piece called Heavenward Meditation for Solo Violin. I composed it about four or five months ago. It's about five, six minutes. Okay. Um, this electronic tempora, um, uh, imitating the sound of the actual tempora that's used as a drone instrument in Indian music. And um, my violin's retuned F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, C sharp. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, there's, it's a, it's a fusion piece. Great. Love it. Uh, where are you, where are you, uh, uh, from right now? Uh, Pittsburgh. I'm in Pittsburgh right now. Pittsburgh. I live not far from the Pittsburgh zoo. Okay. Um, how is, how, how are things going with the uh, quarantine for you? Uh, I've adjusted to teaching all my lessons online. I have about 30 students. Um, I do a mixture of zoom, FaceTime and Skype. Okay. Great. Um, you ready? Yeah. All right. Thank you. 
Excellent. So that uh, it's on Spotify and YouTube. If anybody wants to check it out with uh, with uh, some Indian photos to go along with it. <laughs> Great. So what what inspired that piece? It's definitely like a, a mixing of East and West. Yeah. Um. What inspired that piece? You know, I actually hadn't composed anything for about five or six years, mm. and um, I was. I just had a lot going on in my life, so um, yeah, I was just compositionally stagnant for five or six years, and then this piece just suddenly burst out of me, um, which I think is often the case with creative types. If they don't, if they don't create for a long period of time, oftentimes when it does come out, it's just, you know, um, normally I take a really, really long time to write a piece of music, and this one came out in just a few weeks. It was actually... It, yeah, it was just, it was waiting to come out. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It sounded excellent. So did you get something else for us? Yeah, so I picked one slow and one fast piece. This piece I composed um, 10 years ago, and this is called Gershwin on the Ganges. Mm. It was my first foray into um, writing uh, fusion music and music where I retune the violin. I actually have to tune everything up a half step uh, to GD, GD. So I got into this about 12 years ago. I decided to take um, South Indian Carnatic violin lessons at a local temple because I had tried, I'd done bluegrass, I had done jazz, and I thought, what's really different? Because it's so much fun to find all the different ways you can make sounds out of this instrument. Mm -hmm. And the Indian tradition is a marvelous one, and I wanted to learn it. And it's great for shifting practice, you know? <laughs> so. <laughs> So I had to learn a whole new uh, reading system. I had to read Sari, Gama, Padani, Sa, the letters. And, um, but I did that for five summers. And that for me was the breakthrough in being able to compose for my own instrument. Because when you have Paganini and Izai, we're going to hear later, Sandro is going to play Izai. When you have these famous people like Vinyaski writing for the violin, it's very intimidating as a composer to write for your own instrument. But once I retuned the violin, then I was able to uh, move my fingers in the same muscle patterns they were used to and totally different sounds were popping out. Mm. And then I added to that my knowledge of some ragas. So this piece you're gonna hear, it's, it's a mixture of two or three different raga scales. And it's called Gershwin on the Ganges because it mixes jazz with Indian sounds. So it's kind of a humorous title. Mm. And it's part of a set of Indian folk dances that I'm always trying to add to. It can also, on YouTube, I have a video of this uh, with um, Indian Drummer. It also works with Indian drums. And then I do a little flamenco guitar stuff at the end. All right. Here we go. Can you hear me fine? Yes. Okay, so this piece, uh, just two and a half minutes long, <laughs> so not quite as long as the first one. Thank <laughs> you. 
for listening whoever's out there <laughs> <laughs> welcome sounded sounded excellent uh i'm trying to do one thing here okay uh just wanted to oh whoops sorry i want to just make a quick uh shill here for uh donations so please consider contributing to performers on the show uh many of us have been out of work since mid-march and have not had much of any relief which if you've tried to deal with unemployment you know how bad that is um so uh, wdav has been helping out by contributing 50 dollars a month to the artists and anything that you can spare uh to help us would be fantastic um the uh contribution links are in the chat so venmo clt new music uh cash app or uh paypal um up right on the screen there boom here we go boom paypal charlotte new music Cash App, Dollar Sign, Charlotte New Music, Venmo, Charlotte New Music. Um, anything you can spare would, would be absolutely fantastic. And all the money goes to the performers and helps us to run uh, this every week. So uh, next up is Ben Geller. Um, ben, is, when, uh, ben is going to be performing the suite for Viola Alone by Quincy Porter. I'm Ben here. There you are. Can you hear me? Hey, yeah, I can hey. hear you. Great. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, about your piece? Um, sure. Uh, it was written by Quincy Porter in the 1930s. Um, he was a violist composer, uh, more composer than violist, um, but he, uh, you know, born in 1897 and he passed in 1966. Um, he wrote this uh, piece and uh, completed it on October 15th in 1930 uh, when he was in Paris uh, on a three-year stay funded by the Guggenheim Fellowship. Um, he uh, held teaching and administrative positions at the Cleveland Institute of Music, Vassar, uh, and the New York Conservatory of Music in Yale. Um, he uh, you know, was highly committed to the development and promotion of American music, and he was among the group of composers to co-found the American Music Center along with Aaron Copeland and Howard Hansen. Um, you know, the, uh, something about him, while Porter's music exhibits 20th century tonality, he eschewed many of the avant-garde experiments of his fellow composers and focused on writing well-crafted music in traditional forms. So um, this piece is a great example of such compositional craftsmanship. Uh, idiomatically written for the viola, the suite's four tightly constructed movements display a mixture of styles and harmonic consonants and dissonance. The first movement, the lento, explores the viola's color palette and leads directly into the frenetic allegro furioso with a pulsating rhythmic drive that suggests a locomotive. <laughs> the lyrical third movement, the larghetto espressivo, is a calm and serene moment of repose before the boisterous Allegro Spiritoso, an impressive feat of fiddling that reveals Porter's American roots. <laughs> so that I stole, well, just read. Wikipedia? Uh, from uh, the, David Beinog, the editor of the uh, American Viola Society. Um, <laughs> he wrote the blurb on it, so. Cool, you ready? Yeah.
That's it. That's great. Fantastic. That was excellent. An excellent piece. Thank you. Um, can you kind of tell us a little bit about uh, composing for viola? Um, it's actually one of my favorite instruments. Um, Mine too. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't do a lot of composing for viola. I mostly have to worry about playing it, mm -hmm. uh, which is hard enough. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's fun when you get composers like, you know, um, who's this guy, Quincy Porter, um, <laughs> who really, you know, understand the, 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 you know, the tonalities and sonorities and really can, and, and don't just kind of make it a background instrument. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just because it's the alto voice doesn't mean it can't have something to say. Right. So don't don't treat it like a big violin. In other words, more or less, yeah. <laughs> how how is uh, quarantine working for you? How, how have you been holding up? You know, it's it's actually pretty good. Uh, I feel like when we go back to work, I'm not going to have enough time for all of the things that I've been doing, like uh, mm -hmm. trying to start a garden. Um, you know, just in case we don't go back to work in the next couple of months, and uh, um, you know getting stuff done around the house and um it just you know the, the days go by but uh no it's definitely scary and um you know miss hanging out with people um you know um but uh yeah it's it's going all right and i mean the symphony's got a lot of little things going on here and there like we've been you know putting out those group uh recordings and um you know one-off things i i actually did this uh the second movement of this piece um for the for the symphony a little while ago um so some people might have seen that and been like you this is a repeat performance but um <laughs> no it, it's uh it's scary but we're we're getting through it i guess yeah cool well thank you for taking the time oh play it for us. Pleasure. Was thanks for tuning in right. thanks for having me yeah absolutely okay next we're going to kind of change things up uh we're going to robert mcclure Robert, can you hear me? There you go. There we go. <laughs> All right. How you doing? Pretty good. Uh, like you said, now for something completely different. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about what you got, got going on here? We got a little picture in picture happening here. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to be doing a piece uh, that is very recent for me. Um, it's called Break. Um, I wrote it maybe you know, a couple months ago, it doesn't really feel like I wrote it because it's, uh, it's constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. um, it's a kind of improvisatory piece for no input mixer, which is this thing right here. Uh, Talk a little bit about the no input mixer idea. Sure. Um, so a no input mixer, basically, uh, there's nothing going into it, nothing external going into it. It takes the output of the mixer and routes it right back into the input right here and then that mm -hmm. creates uh, uh, feedback loops mm -hmm. and uh, you can basically every knob then is something that can change that feedback loop uh, musically or noisily or however you want to <laughs> however you want to term it mm. okay great um, sorry continue, continue what, what the name of your piece was it's called break okay anytime you're ready you great all right
Yeah. Thank Very you. nice. Cool. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. Um, can you talk a little bit about your, the setup that you have there? Um, is, is all the pitch generation coming from the mixer or do you have external sound sources outside of your voice or how does that work? Uh, it's all from the mixer. Um, wow. Basically, I have written a max patch mm -hmm. um, where I can capture sounds live from the mixer and then, you know, make the rhythms that I'm making. Mm -hmm. So everything you're hearing that is not my voice is coming from the mixer in one way or the other. Wow. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, I've, I've heard about the uh, no input mixer thing. I just have no, I've, I've seen some demonstrations on YouTube. This is the first time I've actually seen a performance. Uh, do you know how that got started at all? You know, I don't have a, uh, a really good idea about it. I mean, for for me, I started getting into it because I'm a I'm a university professor at Ohio University, and we had all of these old Mackie 1202 mixers kind of lying around doing nothing. And, you know, uh, I had some students who were starting to get into, you know, hey, let's make some some crazy noise or some crazy sounds with electronic music. And I was like, well, this is a thing. Why don't we just try it? So a couple of students and I started messing around and making pieces. And um, this is uh, this piece came about just because I kind of wanted to get back to performing, you know, as a composer and uh, a percussionist who barely plays percussion anymore. Um, I wanted some avenue for me to, you know, perform live again. And so I've been kind of messing around with this idea. And, th and that's, I, I think the one of the great things about this is that it's, um, you know, it's so mutable, it's so malleable into something that you want to do as long as you're willing to get into improvisation. Hmm. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of where, say, circuit bending was at like 10 years ago. Yeah. It seems like this is this is kind of the next wave. It, it definitely looks very interesting. Yeah. Great. You. That sounded, that sounded great. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how, uh, how you've been doing with the, uh, the coronavirus and quarantine and everything? Uh, well, we've, uh, my family and I, my wife and two daughters, uh, six and four, have been uh, staying in the same house together for the last two months. And as uh, anyone else out there with kids knows, um, that's a challenge, especially if you're expected to work full time, which I have been up until like the last week when uh, classes ended at OU. Um, so it's been uh, a learning experience, but honestly, I think we've finally found our groove a little bit, which is depressing to say that we've been in this for so long and we've, we actually have had a chance to find a groove. Uh, um, in uh in in how we handle quarantine but it's you know it's uh honestly it's been okay you know i'm i'm, I'm finding time between helping my six-year-old with online kindergarten to write a little music here and there hmm. great yeah uh thanks sounds excellent uh thank, thank you for you. your time um before we get to our, our last composer our last performer excuse me of the uh evening just wanted to make another uh quick pitch uh, just remind everybody that uh, the current uh, is kind of supported by your donations. Uh, we do get a, a very generous donation of $50 from WDAV Classical Public Radio. Um, but everything else that uh, that comes in goes basically to the performers and, and to, uh, to run this for you every week. So uh, Elizabeth has put up the uh, various ways we can take donations through Venmo at Charlotte New Music, Cash App, Dollar Sign, Charlotte New Music, or through PayPal at Charlotte New Music. So uh, any little bit you can contribute, even $5 would, would be a, a, a big help for us. So our last performer of the evening is, I gotta find my sheet here, sorry. Uh, Sandro Leal San Sebastian. Sorry, I probably butchered your last name, Sandro, sorry. Are you here? Uh, Sandro here. There you are. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Did I say your name Sandro, right or remotely right? Sandro, I'll say it for you, Sandro Leal Santi Esteban. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, this is this is a, 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 an unusual opportunity. I've never done anything like this before. Uh, thank you for Elizabeth for, for hosting uh, for hosting this. This is really great that she's doing this with the Charlotte New Music Festival. So I mean, this is great, you know. 
Cool. Uh, tell us a little bit about the piece you're going to play. Uh, the piece I'm going to play is actually the middle two movements of uh, Sonata Number no. Two by Eugenie Zay, who was the uh, uh, Belgian composer. Uh, these sonatas, uh, he composed about six sonatas, all six sonatas, uh, around 1927. Uh, uh, the middle two movements that I'm playing, uh, they're all follow sort of the uh, Bach, sort of the Bach model. Uh, from the Bach uh, uh, six partitas and sonatas. Uh, in fact, Isai himself was quite, he was quite obsessed uh, with, with the sonatas and partitas by Bach. So he decided to uh, take it about himself and uh, uh, expand uh, the uh, uh, violin repertoire by composing these sonatas, exploring different uh, techniques, violinistic techniques. Great, looking forward to hearing it.
Excellent. Nice job. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you how you've been handling the, the quarantine. I mean, I I, uh, I have a I have a YouTube channel, so um, you know, I started to put uh, videos. I started just first with like Bach uh, sonatas and partitas, uh, just like a couple movies here or there. I'm I'm not playing like I'm not uh, uploading like complete works, but I'm just like trying to st have the uh, um, the audience a little bit engaged with just like short clips mm -hmm. of like movements uh, from the, the big work sonatas. Uh, and I, I personally, I'm a big lover of the side sonatas and the box sonatas. Uh, and uh, the last thing that I that I uploaded in my uh, YouTube channel uh, was the Prokofiev solo sonata, uh, which is rarely performed. And, um, and I thought, well, why not just to just to put uh, all the three movements of the Prokofiev Sonata too. So, uh, but the you know I'm trying to just to keep myself busy, um, uh, just mostly because if I don't, then you know the the attitude just goes down and you know, you, you start getting all these these all these thoughts. Yeah. And all, the, and all of the what ifs, you know. Yeah. The best the best thing to do is just like to straight to to stay positive. Mm -hmm. uh, which is, I think, in my opinion, staying positive is a lot harder than just saying, oh, you know what, today I'm not going to do anything, I'll just like sit around. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> can you. Can you give us a little bit of insight into how you're doing the recording and the video? Are you doing them at the same time? Are you syncing them later? What are you using to record? Um, unfortunately, I do not have um, uh, advanced equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, the the latest thing that I recorded was with with the uh, uh, Panasonic camera that I just got recently, uh, but the beginnings was just with my phone and uh, with the Zoom interface, mm -hmm. uh, which is what I what I'm using right now, uh, connected to the laptop. Uh, and I have a Lenovo right now. The laptop, my laptop is a Lenovo. Uh, the camera that I'm using right now, it's my phone connected straight into the camera. So all this tech stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, just like slowly learning it as, as I do all of these things. Yeah. So I, think, I think a lot of, a lot of my colleagues are, are you know, I, I think some of them know a lot, um, but, but a lot of them just like, you know, the, the, the gigging ones, uh, like myself, um, has, I have, I have had to, you know, sort of like go back to school and learn how to do all of the things with the technology and, and, uh, try yeah. to survive this way, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we've kind of been working on this every week. It gets a little bit better too. This this was a brand new thing when we started, because this was originally like a live jam, a live uh, kind of open mic in clubs. So uh, this is this has been a, a definite sea change for us too. Well, th thanks for your music and thanks for sharing. Thank you um, very much for having me. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to thank Devin, Ben, uh, Robert, and Sandro. Uh, thanks so much for for playing for us. Um, again, one more, uh, one more little shill. If anybody's interested in donating, um, please check the, uh, the, uh, various links on your, on your screen right now, Charlotte new music, everything Charlotte new music, except for cash app, which is the dollar sign. Every little bit helps. Um, and then again, we'll be back next week with, uh, with a different, uh, lineup. So thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>